This lecture will be attentive to the principal as an instructional leader. A study out of Stanford showed that half of the principal time is really spent with management. 12% with instruction. So if we want an instructional leader and yet only 12% is spent with instruction, then we've got to flip the model. 20% is dealing with people and 19% is other duties and responsibilities. But if we're leading for learning and we're creating principles as instructional leaders, uh, we have to realize that instructional decision-making is going to be at the core of what we should be doing. With purpose and intentionality, the ability of the school principal should be directly involved in the curriculum and instructional issues that affect teaching and learning within the school. As we looked at the national standards, uh, standard four, which really talk about curriculum instruction and assessment, there's a number of points there that need to be attentive to uh, for any principal and someone in leadership in a school. When a principal goes from average to good, students go from 50th percentile to 60th percentile. And when a principal goes to good from good to excellent, goes from 60th percentile to 72nd percentile. So that, that sense of developing leadership, going from good to great to excellent, impacts the lives of our students and what they can learn. The instructional leadership model, causes them pose them, model high levels of instruction, inspire others toward a vision of excellence and in instruction, challenge current instructional practices and encourage innovation, enable and empower each teacher to become excellent in instruction, and encourage the heart by, of teaching by recognizing those who exemplify great instruction. And how do we allow them to, to rise to the top? And how do we, how do we note their um, success? We often think of the principal's leader as this top-down model, but it's really a bottom-up model. The sense that somehow instructional leadership should be uh, animated from the bottom, whereas the, the teachers are excited about um, models of education and uh, how it's applied about different curriculums. Uh, the teacher then uh, is able to work with that sense of curriculum and instruction and assessment, and then the students are impacted by um, that process. The principal is an instructional leader, again, seen as the, the center. Um, there's a sense of design, framework, but also that sense of creating a professional learning community. So that's going to be important for the professional to do. Commit to working collaboratively and organizing processes of collective inquiry and improvement to achieve better results for the students they serve. Hence, that sense of developing the team to be that professional learning community. Again, that learning community starts with those shared values, that shared mission that shared vision. Then the principal in that leadership capacity, how does that leadership be shared? How is a culture of shared learning and inquiry part of that process? Is there a sharing of best practices? And finally, is the individual teacher, is there a commitment to that sense of autonomy? Um, significance, innovation, all those part of what a teacher hopes is part of their portfolio and is there support from that, for that from the principal. And we heard from seven habits of highly effective people that one of the habits is to, to start with the end in mind. And so Wiggins and McTai really talked about backward design, start with the, the results first. What do you want to accomplish? Uh, determine acceptable evidence 
and then plan the learning experiences and instruction in accordance with what you know. Charlotte Danielson has a framework for teaching that you can find online. Um, there's planning and preparation, of course, uh, creating the classroom environment, um, developing the, the, the instruction, and then also other professional responsibilities. So it's not an, a, a one thing, it's it, all of these have to work together somehow and fit. Planning and preparation, uh, demonstrating the knowledge of students, uh, setting instructional outcomes, knowing your resources, uh, what is the design instruction, what are the assessments that are going to be used. How to create that uh, classroom environment um, of respect, a culture of learning, uh, managing classroom procedures, managing behavior, organizing the physical space, all of these things are, are so important in the classroom. And then with instruction, uh, how is that communicated to the students? Um, how are they engaged? How are they assessed? And is there a sense of flexibility with that instruction? But also with professional responsibilities, um, we know that just teaching is not the only thing that a, a teacher does, but that there's uh, that sense of reflecting upon that lesson, um, maintaining record, communicating with families, uh, profess, participating you know, in professional communities, um, and so there's really that sense of uh, how to put this whole thing together. Again, you can look at all this at uh, danielsongroup.org. Uh, As we look at the principal as instructional leader, we've heard a lot. You know, there's a lot on the principal's plate. What's the positive aspect and what are the challenges to that? And hopefully in our next class, we can um, talk about that a little bit. This is the usual image of a principal, a principal that should be an instructional leader, and yet it seems like everything else is in the way, keeping that from happening. We'll also talk about what kind of administrational um, support there is for the, uh, the principal. And so we'll also go over the school administrative manager you know, maybe you already have uh, someone in that position in your school. We can talk about that.